Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone is doing well. On this week's episode, we are going to talk about customer service, customer service, and customer service. Keep it here. So Last year I had a look at some various surveys and there was one I really had a look at around electric charging companies in the UK. Um, how they're perceived by end users and uh, in the industry and um, you know reliability, easy to use as well as customer service. Now I'll be referring to my phone because there's a, a, a list or a top 10 as of last year, this was like July last year, uh, performed by ZapMap, um, and you had obviously Tesla supercharging network at the top with 92.94% of like satisfaction. Instavolt, then Charge Place Scotland, Shell Recharge, Podpoint, then Polar, then Ingenie, and then Genie Point. Now. I've used, I think, all of these apart from um, Charge Place Scotland, although I've heard really good things about them. And I wanted to go through, really, my experiences with uh, a lot of these and the customer service that comes along with those. So let's start with Tesla Supercharger Network. Now, I can only go from other people's experience because I don't personally own a Tesla. Um, I know people that do and many people that do just rave about the Tesla supercharging network. Now um, I know that countrywide this is looks to be the far best because they've built the car and the supercharging network in tandem. So it's like an Apple product. You they, they make the hardware and they make the software, they work in tandem. Um, no offense Android owners and every other Windows and things like that. Um, but it makes sense and the way that they've done it they've expedited all of these infrastructure network and you go to some sites and yes there's only one or two but you go to other sites and there's 20 and 30 stalls um, so those that own a Tesla please pop some comments in below uh, maybe I'll do a full up episode for, for those particular ones so let's go to the next one so I'm not going to go through all of them but I'm going to go through some of these some of the ones that I tend to use and some of the ones that I was a bit surprised with so Instavolt um, that had 85% um, now Instavolt are, I wouldn't say new, but they they came quite quickly in the last couple of years and they've ramped up their um, provider and their network across the country really quickly. Now me personally, everywhere I've used an Instavolt charger, I've never had a problem. Touch wood. Um, these are reliable chargers, they're fast, usually ranging upwards of 50 kilowatts and upwards. They are um, contactless payments, so you can use your Apple Watch, you can use your phone, you can use a contactless payment card. You plug in, you tap the card, you press go, job done. It's really quick, simple and easy. If I've had to use the um, customer service because uh, a previous user has not left it in the right way, they've been spot on. So I can't fault Instavolt. Um, again, comments below, personally, if I've got a choice of using Instavolt over a lot of others, I'll use them. Then um, let's, let's move to Shell Recharge. Now Shell Recharge um, I've used a couple of times. Um, I have a, uh, a card that uh, works which was New Motion. I use that in my work chargers but also now use it for Shell Recharge. Again like Instavolt they're not the cheapest but um, I've always found them pretty reliable and yes they're um, to do with an oil company and we don't really know what the motives are yet because Shell had this grand plan of rolling these out and that seems to have been quite limited in my opinion. Um, but when I've used them, again, they've been quick, reliable, fast to use. You pay for what you get, you know, okay, they're not cheap, but you know, like me, if you tend to rely on a lot of public charging, they're ideal. So again, really good. My only concern with these, um, Instavolt, for instance, tend to do jewels at, at a time. Shell only seems to put like one unit in most places, which is a bit of a shame. I'd expect at least two now. Now, these aren't cheap, um, but I would expect now that companies learn from other manufacturers and, and do that. Then we have Podpoint. Now, Podpoint, I, um, we have, again, we have some Podpoints at work, 
Um, I've used a few of these when you're out and about. I used some uh, Warner Brothers Studios, uh, I think it was last year or the year before. Pretty easy, pretty reliable. What you do have to do though, remember, is that you do within, I think it's like five or ten minutes, you need to confirm your charge um, when you've walked away from, uh, for, or before you've walked away from the charging unit. Otherwise it will stop and you have to go back and start it again. So bear that in mind. Pop point again, they tend to be mainly like the slower chargers, the seven kilowatts and, and things like that, but they've, again, they've been pretty reliable. Um, I have come across those that have been a little bit hit and miss. Um, that's down to more the site than the actual uh, manufacturer. Um, and I haven't actually had to use their customer services yet. So if people on uh, are looking at this video, if you do, let me know what your comments are below and we can do a, a bit of a follow up on that. Um, Polar, so Polar got 79% and is further down the, the list. Now, at one time I would have said for me, Polar would have been right up there on a, on a daily basis or now known as BP Charge Master or BP Pulse. They seem to have gone through so many different changes. Um, but with this one, I particularly have liked it. Um, I, I pay the £7 monthly subscription. I find it easy with a car, I just go up and do it. Most of these now, if not all, have got now contactless payment. I used one the other night for contactless payment. Reasonably priced, and um, it's, it, was, it was pretty easy, pretty straightforward. I do find, though, with some of the older units, that sometimes, certainly in the summer, or even extreme winter, the screens freeze, and you do need to go through customer services. Now, charging-wise, um, I have had hits and misses with BP uh, Charge Master. Um, although more have worked than not. However, I have noticed since moving from Polar to BP, the customer service has been slow to pick up on phone calls to them to you know, reset a charger or somebody's pressed the emergency stop before me and you've had to go through that sort of process. So BP could do a lot better, I think, in terms of improving that. Now I know at the moment COVID and everything else has probably restricted a lot of these customer services uh, companies from either being in the office or being at full capacity. So uh, probably this year and the end of last year we probably had to take it a little bit of a pinch of salt but I'd like to see that improve for BP. Um, I'd also like to see more multiple charge hubs like the Milton Keynes charging hub and things like that. I'd like to see more of that coming, coming across and not just like the ones and twos. Again you tend to find these in ones I'd like to see at least minimum of two um, so again, that's that's polar. And um, I'm going to charge. I'm going to um, I'm going to go with Genie Point first before Ingenie. Now Genie Point, I've had recent problems with on their slow seven kilowatt chargers around Hitchin. Um, anywhere else, don't seem to have uh, the same problem. Like in the next town, uh, no other seven kilowatt chargers I have issues with. Um, they are very expensive, even on the slow ones, you tend to pay like 30p a kilowatt, um, even on a 7 kilowatt charger, so it does does cost you quite a bit. Um, it's, it's, not, it's convenient in that usually I'm parking somewhere and I get free parking and I pay for charging, but the charging tends to outweigh the parking for Genie Point. They're a bit old technology and a bit of a, a legacy one. Um, I have a card because their, app, their um, website was crap. Um, I'm not a great fan, as you can imagine. Um, I've had more problems than not with them, um, but sometimes it's having another one just in case. Um, and let's get to the last one. So Ingenia, I think it's now called Osprey. Um, these were uh, good advocates of Hearts EVs when we when we first started. Uh, we used to meet at the Bakehouse in Welling Garden City and they put uh, uh, two big rapids in there which you could charge multiple cars at once. The prices are, are, are very convenient. Now that they've sorted out the initial charge um, that they uh, charge it was like £25, now it's down to a £5, which you don't actually see in your account anymore. Um, and then the cost is is in line with the likes of Instavolt and Shell and people like that. And again, I can't fault their service. Their service is brilliant. I'm really surprised that they're further down this list. Um, I would put them up there near with the likes of uh, Instavolt and, and Shell Recharge for, for service reliability and things like that. And again, these are being put into pub car parks and convenient places and um, are usually put in pairs. So again, they're thinking ahead of 
one person's already using it and maybe half an hour and somebody pulls up. So, you know, they're doing the right thing. I'd like to see other companies follow the same suit. Anyway, have I missed anything? Is there any other charge companies that um, should be on there that you feel should? Um, what's your experiences with any of these customer service companies? Um, because at the end of the day, if you're in a car park in the middle of the night and you're charging and something doesn't work, the one thing you want to do is be able to contact someone, then be helpful and to be able to sort you out, especially if you're low on charge. So um, let me know what your thoughts are, experiences in the comments below. As always, thank you very much to my Patreon supporters. You guys are fantastic. Um, hopefully this uh, video quality and the sound is a lot better than what it was before. I've just invested in a new camera on behalf of you Patreons and everyone watching. And until next time, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.